What up, internet? It's me, PC Patient Zero, and I am here to talk about something that I don't normally talk about. Me! Yay! Some of you might not know that I'm a writer. I write fiction for young adults, mostly. I also write short stories and microfiction. But what I'm trying to get published is fiction for young adults. And I do a lot of writing. I've been writing since I was a child, since before I could even write. I used to tell stories to pretend audiences, which probably made me look like a crazy person to anybody who was nearby, because I talked to myself pretty much constantly. Artists are crazy, what are you gonna do? So anyway, I thought it might be interesting for people if I talked about my creative process, especially if you're out there trying to become a writer yourself and you're interested in how various writers do their creative process thing. And it's come to my attention that mine is maybe a little bit weird and different, so maybe this will help you along your path to becoming a writer. But before we begin, I am not even remotely properly attired for an artistic situation. And no, I'm not going to put on makeup. I hate wearing makeup. So you're just going to have to deal with the beauty that is my face without makeup. But I am going to remedy this artistic, not wearing the right gear situation. Jump cut! Bam! Here I am. I'm wearing a beret. That's how you can tell. Art is gonna go down. All right, now you're probably thinking, Psh, so what? She writes. Lots of people write. Well, I have written several full-length, beginning-to-end books. Um, this is one. Phoenix. I've self-published this one, although my next one I am trying to get published by some company or something. It's just a lot easier to distribute it when somebody else distributes it for you. But other than this one and the one that I am working on getting published right now, I've also written at least three, geez I can't even remember, uh, full-length books before that that I just sort of wrote because I write compulsively. So I am going to be using my latest book a lot as an example in this video. So I'm going to describe it very briefly. Some of you may know about it already. It is about a young man named Anders who has his soul promised to the devil by his father. And then Anders goes to hell and gets sort of saved by an angel who then takes him and puts him in the demonscape where Anders has to try to destroy the ledger of souls where his name is written and free himself from being a demon because he's also a demon at this point because he was turned into a demon. This is kind of confusing. You know that flow chart that I told you to get for Taming of the Shrew? No, no, you probably won't need it. All you really need to know is that my story is about a boy who gets turned into a demon and has to find a way to cure that problem. Simple as that. Okay. So now that that's out of the way, we're gonna start talking about my artistic process. The first part of any artistic process is inspiration. Inspiration can come from a lot of different places, and I will be the first to admit that it never comes completely from my head. There's, as my mother will say, there's nothing new under the sun, and I think we need to embrace that. There's no such thing anymore as a completely original idea. As long as you are not directly stealing from something, you are probably okay with whatever idea you have, because if you are inspired by something, whatever you create is going to be vastly different from the thing you were inspired by. Um, the things that inspired me to write my demon story, which I have yet to get a proper title for, um, where I saw in a video game a young man who was turned into a demon-esque creature. He wasn't really a demon in the game, but he was blue and he had like spikes on his back and I was like, huh. And then at the same time, a friend of mine posted something on Facebook about a movie or something, some piece of media that she had seen, heard, read about someone who had had their soul taken by the devil. And I was like, 
what if a kid got his soul promised to the devil by his father and then he got turned into a blue demon that looks a lot like that video game character? That's inspiration. That's how the initial idea comes together. Uh, my inspirations tend to come from a lot of different places, frequently from video games, sometimes from something as simple as somebody's status update on Facebook. It's really easy to get inspiration and don't be afraid to take inspiration as long as you're not stealing someone else's. And don't be worried if somebody says, oh my gosh, that's exactly like such and such a thing. Because, like I said, there's nothing completely new under the sun, but your thing is going to be vastly different from whatever so-and-so came up with anyway, so don't worry about it. Also, if you're a writer, you understand this phenomenon that happens where you have got about a million ideas in your brain. I have so many potential stories and inspirations in my brain. It's not even funny, it's like a whole other world in there. It's crazy. So, sometimes for inspiration, I go to one of those. One of those old stories that's floating around in there, and maybe something new will have happened that will get me excited about writing it finally. So having lots and lots of ideas is always a good thing, and don't feel bad if you have to push some of those ideas aside because a better inspiration has come along, because you will not forget those ideas, and they will be there waiting for you when you need a new inspiration. Now for my actual, I guess, what you would call process. Makes it sound like processed cheese food. My writing process is pretty different from any of the other ones I have encountered, but whatever your writing process is, I've seen many, many authors, and I'm friends with lots of people who write, and literally no two of them have exactly the same process. Some of them have really similar processes, but it's like snowflakes. No two authors have the exact same writing process. So don't you ever let anyone tell you that the way that you write is incorrect because people will try to tell you that I've had people look at my writing process and say you're doing it wrong and I'm like well why am I how am I doing it wrong it works for me if it works for you don't let anybody tell you that you're doing it wrong my writing process is a little weird because I don't write anything down until I sit down to write the book that's where a lot of people are like you can't you have to write a draft you have to write an uh, overview. You have to write something before you write the book. And I'm like, I don't. It's all... It's there. The, the draft is there. The overview is there. It's, it's up here. Which seems really sort of, sort of conceited, like, oh, I can keep it all in my brain and you can't. But it's not. It's just the way that my brain works. I don't write stuff down beforehand. What I do is, when I get an inspiration, I usually know how the story is going to start how the story is going to end. I really do recommend that you know how your story is going to end. I know that some people do just start writing and, and end it somehow, but a lot of people I know who do that have trouble ending the story because they have a great idea for the start and they don't know where it ends. However, if that is your process, hey, nothing wrong with it. Um, I know how the story is going to start, I know how the story is going to end, I know who the main character is going to be, and I know who at least one other character that he is going to encounter is going to be. I also know several key points within the story, several things that need to happen, big events that will get main character to end of story. The rest happens. I like to think of a story almost writing itself because like I knew in my demon book Anders was going to be the main character, and he was going to encounter another character named Brian, and I already kind of had Brian planned out, and I knew about Brian. But there was another character who came along in the book, and I had no idea she was even going to be there. She was a complete surprise, and I was like, huh. I often talk about it as meeting a new character, because they're often a surprise to me, and I don't know who they're going to be, or what they're going to be like, or what they're even doing there until they show up, and they tell me. I'm like, hi! So, I don't plan a lot of that. I let that happen, I let those characters introduce themselves. I also, as far as bridging important points, I knew that I wanted Anders to meet Legion, very famous demon there, and I knew I wanted him to do it fairly early in the story. So I bridged to that point, but when I 
got him there to the place where he meets Legion. I knew I wanted Legion, but I didn't know what Legion looked like. So I just kind of wrote and Legion told me what he looked like. I didn't I don't know, I wasn't like channeling the actual demon. I mean the story flowed and he became how I didn't even know that I envisioned him until I wrote it. So it's yeah, it's kind of a very fluid process with me, and I have a lot of trust. Trust in the story, trust that it will come for me, it'll turn out. So for me, that's basically my process of actually writing the story. Very few things planned out, but very concrete things planned out in my head. No writing of anything beforehand, no planning. I just, I'm... I am dyslexic, so I don't know if maybe that helps me see things. This hat is bothering me, I don't know why. More clearly in my head, sort of a terrible beret going on. But if you have to write things down, yes, do whatever works for your process, and don't let anybody tell you that that is the wrong way to write a book. Now we are on to the next part, part three? Sure. How I write. How I write when I write the actual words hitting the page. I try, right now, it's super easy because I don't have any big publishers or any deadlines or anything like that. I write when I feel it. So that could be every day for a month. That could be one day in a month. I. Right now, someday, I will gladly, gladly take on a deadline if that meant I was getting published, so don't get me wrong. But right now, I don't have one. So I write when I feel it, and that works really well for me because it is really natural, and the story really flows quite well that way. I spend a lot of time thinking about my story. Um, when I'm not writing it, I'm pretty much constantly thinking about it and planning things and figuring out what's going to happen next, how am I going to bridge from important part to important part, what is the character going to learn, how is he going to grow, etc, etc. Lots of thinking about the story going on, actual writing, very random, and I would definitely say this, especially if you don't have a deadline, you're like me, embrace writing when you feel it. Forcing myself to write, I can do it, and I don't think it's crap when I do it, so don't get me wrong. If there's ever, if anybody wants to publish me and uh, wants to put a deadline on me, please do it. But forcing yourself to write frequently isn't a good thing. So, like, you think that you want to write the great American novel, and you have some good ideas, and you sit down and maybe for two days you write, and you just, it's coming and it feels great. And then day three, you sit down and it, you're just not feeling it anymore, and you panic and you worry, and you write anyway, and what you write is sort of okay, but not great. I feel like don't write unless you feel it, or unless you have an important deadline to meet. Also, I believe very firmly that there is no such thing as bad writing. I mean, there's such thing as bad writing. But what I mean is there's no such thing as, as a bad process of writing. Sitting down to write. No matter what you write, even if you churn out crap, even if you're, if you're, if you're just writing a fan fiction for fun, it is not bad. Even if it's something you're never going to show anyone, it's good. It's practice. Something you don't finish, it's good. It's practice. A big thing that a lot of people ask about, and ask me usually, but I've seen it asked a lot, is writer's block. What do you do when you have writer's block? I probably get writer's block, but I don't realize that it is writer's block because I write when I feel it. So I can go a month without writing anything. And I don't let it scare me. I don't let it alarm me. I don't think that maybe I've lost my mojo or somehow writer's block has got me in this, like everybody's got this thing with writer's block. It's this horrible negative thing and oh, kill it, kill it. 
I don't worry because I know that there's stories in there and they're going to happen when they want to happen. Um, if you have that writer's block, writer's block, sometimes I'll be sitting there and I'll really feel like I want to write but I don't know what I want to write. Prompts. Find a prompt. I love writing from prompts. It's so fun. Go online, find some place that's got some prompts. Follow one, write a short story. It's a really great way to get the juices flowing. And I think I mentioned this a little bit ago, starting but not finishing, that's okay too. I never, never punish yourself for writing. I have started so many stories you would not believe. So many unfinished stories and I never beat myself up over that. You can't. It's, like I said, all writing is practice. So you start a story and you don't finish it, that is okay. Maybe you'll go back and finish it sometime. Maybe you never will. Completely fine. Don't punish yourself for that. Part. The next part. Editing! I hate editing so much. Oh, I hate it. I understand it's extremely important, and I definitely do it, but oh my gosh, I hate it. And that's partly because of the way my brain works. When I have gotten all of a story onto a page, my brain is done. It's, it's not me going, this is perfect, send it out, publish it, it's awesome. It's my brain going, boom, story finished, on to the next idea. What's the next idea? Oh my gosh, I have a new idea, write it now. And I'm like, no, 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 brain. We have to sit down with idea one and fix it because it is not perfect. And brain's like, I don't care that it's not perfect. It's on the page, it's done. Next. So editing is like my biggest challenge. Um, also, it's a big challenge because I don't have a professional editor to turn to. I would love one, but I don't, so I have to do a lot of um, asking for help from friends and family, which is great, but confusing. Because you get conflicting edits a lot, and that is, that is something that has reduced me to tears, I will not lie, many times, because my friends and family will be helping me and it's awesome and great, but one will say one thing with great conviction and the other will say the exact opposite thing and I'm left in the middle going, what do I change and how do I change it? How can I fix this, please? So I would love to have, and if you have somebody, like if you can get your hands on an editor, oh my gosh, love them forever because the whole uh, sort of crowd group editing thing, while really great and really helpful, is challenging because there are so many opinions out there and you can't make everyone happy because you like it the way it is and then people want to change it and you're like, no, it's my baby. Mm. So you gotta get past that. That's a tough thing to get past, but um, my editing process involves a lot of people and a lot of spelling and grammatical corrections because I'm a writer, not a speller. I think that's okay. As long as your ideas get out on the page, you can fix the spelling. I mean, you will have to fix the spelling, definitely. Fix it, and the grammar, fix it. It's not okay to just leave it. But don't worry about it at first until you get to the editing stage because, yeah. I cannot spell. Okay, part, the last part. So you want to be a writer. Yay! First of all, I say amazing, awesome, totally go do it because there are so many great, amazing ideas out there and you should add yours to it. One thing, just gonna be a little bit of a rant here. One thing that annoys me, and if you're a writer, it probably annoys you. Everyone in the world assumes they can write. I don't know why, but I have encountered this again and again and again. People ask me what I do. I say I write. They say, oh, I have an idea for a novel. And I facepalm. 
because there's a huge, giant, enormous chasm, grand canyon of difference between thinking that you have an idea for a novel and maybe somebody will write it down to become famous and actually being a writer. If you guys are writers, you know you've probably been here. And when people look at your writing and they try to critique it, they don't know what they're talking about. Because everyone thinks that they can write and everyone thinks that it is easy. And you know, it is not. Not everyone is a writer and that's like one of like one of the most frustrating things about being a writer is that everyone thinks they can do it and everyone automatically thinks that they will be better than you at it or at least as good as you at it and they don't know that it's hard um, it, it, for some reason that's one of the like people people see somebody painting an amazing picture and they go oh man I wish I could paint like that but they know that they can't why does everybody think that they can write okay rant over I need to yeah no more rant now if you want to be a writer and you're interested in just starting out and you're like, I don't want to be that guy who just thinks he can write, I want to be a real writer. Awesome. Yes. But as any writer will tell you, you're gonna suck when you start out. It's a fact of life. You don't just start doing something and be awesome at it. Maybe you've got a little extra talent that's gonna help you. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna struggle. You're gonna suck. That is completely okay. That is good. I sucked, I still suck in some ways. I'm probably still very terrible in plenty of ways. Um, I notice a marked improvement from the beginning of my book to the end of my book. That's how well I can see that I'm coming along, which is encouraging and at the same time it's like, oh, I really wish that my book at the beginning matched my book at the end. And looking at some of my old writing is cringe-worthy. Don't be afraid to write shit. Just write. Like I said, there is no bad writing. Write shit for a while. That's completely okay. Just don't try to get it published. Twilight. Twilight. <laughs> Sorry. Is that out loud? I meant to say Twilight. And of course, there's the big question about getting published. Mostly people will tell you to just send stuff in. Try to get an agent, try to get, send stuff to agents, send stuff to publishers, and you've heard this, I'm sure, get used to rejection. If you're feeling really down and out, go look at some of your favorite authors and see how long it took them to get published. I mean, there are freaks of nature, like J.K. Rowling, who is just like, somebody found her and was like, this is amazing, publish it. She edited it. Of course. Don't assume that what she wrote on the napkin was what they put in the book. That is no. But they liked the idea and she wrote it and she edited it and then published. Cool. But most of us, most of us try for a very long time and you have to be very tough. So far I've been pretty tough. Um, I don't really have a problem with rejection strangely, since I have extremely low self-esteem. But I just kind of, I enjoy opening the rejection letters just to see, like, what sort of form letter they send, because everybody's got a different kind of, like, form letter that they send, and they're usually really apologetic, which is what's funny. They're usually kind of like, we're so sorry we didn't publish your book, don't hurt us or sue us or come after us with knives and while we sleep. So that, that's always actually kind of fun. So there's always that part that uh, just kind of makes you giggle. So you gotta find the joy in the, in the process. And this is the end. I hope this video wasn't too long and rambling and annoying. I apologize if it was. Got any questions for me? Ask them. This is me pointing towards the comments, not my crotch. And if you want I've been thinking about sort of doing vlogs, but I don't like to vlog about nothing. I feel like I want to add something to the world besides just like me talking about the fact that I hate cold and, and love otters. What? Um, anyway, so if there's anything that you want to hear me vlog about, please tell me and uh, we would love to 
add it to the discussion, and add it to the world. We're gonna go now. Come on, Otter. Let's go get some ice cream. I also really like ice cream.